The only thing I would be resistant to again, like from a saleability or marketability standpoint, is I would be reluctant to eliminate just a couple of rooms that we have on the second floor of these houses because it is a situation where we do, my experience in selling this stuff, which is what I've got to do, is that people like to have guest suites. They like to have masses on the first floor of Bell Street, and they like to have um, they like to have guest suites on the second floor, so that when the kids or grandchildren come, they can have a, a couple of bedrooms and a loft or something for the kids to get away and watch television. And, and they like to have a separation. So that's really the primary reason for it. So, with all due respect, I'd like to have you consider the plans with the second floor and both dwellings, and I'd be willing to make. Some, you know. Well, that's your choice. I, I think we've, we've perhaps belabored this point enough. I think people's positions are known. Um, if you want, we will proceed to finalize the presentation and review of both applications and both. It's up to you. Yeah. I'd certainly like to present the landscaping because we feel that that's an area, especially on North Ocean, where it does provide additional distinction between the two houses as noted in these descriptions. So I'd be happy to introduce Dave Parker, the landscape architect. Which, and, and, um, and getting back to your comment, like. getting back to your comment, uh, it just in the interest of time, Dave, if you could make, right. a, you could make a brief <coughs> landscape presentation, and then I would be willing to have it move to a, a vote. Actually, before we go there, I have a question sure, about sure. Uh, two issues on the uh, 3345. Um, the, the code uh, distinguishes uh, between Spanish Mediterranean and Gulf Stream Bermuda and a lot of their, uh, uh, what is allowed. And in the section of the Gulf Stream, Gulf Stream Bermuda, uh, British colonial, uh, uh, it, it includes the, uh, this home. And it also pro prohibits metal and aluminum siding and mid-elevation stucco banding. Uh, it doesn't, it's, it's under the Gulf Stream Bermuda uh, design. Uh, so it doesn't specifically say uh, West Indies, but it, it kind of includes that in the generally, uh, generally <coughs> speaking, part of the beginning. The, uh, the West Indies, uh, the mid um, stucco banding uh, is something I think if we go back and look at this facade, uh, that would be characterized in your code as if we had a horizontal band, horizontal stucco banding, you know, between on this particular facade. But the um, colonial uh, West Indies style that is part of your code, going back to historic homes in St. Augustine and before that uh, in, uh, in, in, in parts of the Caribbean, um, the style is, uh, West Indies style is very indicative of a smooth stucco base with a second floor of a different material, whether it be board and batten siding or lap siding. So the horizontal banding, I don't believe, that you're referring to is uh, consistent with the actual true style of British colonial where you have horizontal siding on the, on the second floor. But you and submitted this as a Bermuda home. No, this one's a Bermuda home, but this one doesn't have any horizontal banding. Right. It's, okay. they, I'm talking about the uh, 3345. Right. And if we go to the other home, if I can just bring that Which one up quickly. The, 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 the colonial, West the colonial West Indies. Indies. And in the code that's 34. kind of included on the Gulf Stream Bermuda right. colonial. Right. And again, col colonial uh, West Indies, uh, I believe, um, two styles have been approved recently. Lot 5 at Harbor View with this exact same smooth stucco on the base and siding on the second floor. And then 3333, I believe, came before you uh, with all horizontal siding on it in a, in a West Indy style. But again, we can bring in historical references of this particular style, Colonial West Indies, where the ground floor is one material and the second floor is a differing material. With, and, and nine times out of 10, actually 99 times out of 100, the differing material on the second floor is lap siding. And it's just historically sig significant and consistent with colonial West Indies architecture. And uh, so that's what this represents. And so um, I believe that that may be some semantics in the code that um, is inconsistent with the intent of this style. With all due respect to all of this, and I think this is what everyone's trying to say, 
say is um, this is like the what they call it the hood, and I think that they want it to fit in mm -hmm. as opposed to stress poverty. It's all kind of a development on its own. Right. So I think that they just like to see things made a little bit more historic and not more. Absolutely, we'd be happy to. Uh, if I had to put my finger on it, I think that's we don't want. And no offense, mm -hmm. we don't want it to look like stress development. Mm -hmm. We want it to fit in with the neighborhood. I, I'd be happy. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, I, I think what's significant, and we have Dave Bakker here, is looking at the two elevations side by side with the at, as planted landscaping um, along A1A. Uh, again, the driveways, we can understand that we'd love to do a circular drive, but currently the one driveway comes in on center, and you have full view of the front door and the arched entry with no balcony above, and the flanking large palm trees. Um, the other one shows the garden wall with a asymmetrical entry and most of the elevation covered uh, with landscaping. But if it wasn't covered, what you would notice is a one-story portico that is protruding out here at the front entry with the door columns um, going, coming beyond the house. Again, another detail, significant detail that we didn't pick up on in our presentation that is not present on this home but it's certainly one of the most defining features on this home. Um, but if you'd like to talk more about the landscaping, that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah, briefly, um, the driveways, part of the driving factor about their location is the existing trees along A1A. Um, what type of trees along A1A? Yeah, there's existing Australian pines on 3424, so we kind of put the driveway in where we could fit it um, and, and leave as many trees existing out there as possible. So this is an offset driveway, and of course the railing and columns are offset to accommodate that driveway coming through. Uh, this house features columns with a railing. The railing will pick up on the architectural railing. Um, and the other house has, uh, well, it matches the garden wall as part of the house there. Uh, the differences in the landscape are that this house has foxtail palms uh, behind the railing and it has different lower plant material which conceal the railing on the front and the back. So the plant material is different on the front sides of each house. Uh, at the termination of the motor court on this house, there's oak trees here and here, whereas the other house has uh, southern red cedar in both locations. So there's quite a bit of difference uh, in, the, in the landscape design. And uh, it happened on the other house that uh, uh, the driveway could come in on the center and, and create a motor port that extends both north and south. As far as the circular drive, there is not allowed. You, you can't. No, so. you can't do it. Okay. Mr. Mayor, may I suggest uh, respectfully uh, that uh, we don't vote at this time. Uh, I understand that, but I, I'm, I'm suggesting that you have a lot of people here who are trying to do something that's far grander than deal with two houses. They are trying to deal with a town. And um, we've all lived through this. Uh, this is deja, deja vu all over again for me personally because of the two house, two, the duplex and the triplex that 4001 put in on the other side of the street in lieu of a four-story condo. Um, and that was a negotiating process. We went through it with the same view that you're going to put two houses there instead of a condo. That was a starting place. And then they can't look exactly the same. And they don't look exactly the same. But they do look similar. There's no doubt about it. And it was a rather creative process. It took us back and forth and back and forth for a long period of time. I think we all feel frustrated that we had a vision for the Spence property that was different from yours. Uh, there was some compromise uh, as along the way. Um, the town probably still feels that they wish that the Spence house was still there and was just restored. That's not reality. But I think what the mayor has raised here is, is a profound issue, a very important issue, and that you have within your skills the, the ability to move closer to what we, what I think the town wants, um, which is not to have the Lanzani house two next by night, 
all due respect, you're a terrific developer, you're a terrific guy, but there was a point in time in which all the houses in this town were designed by the same architect, and they became, you bought a X house. I, I don't want you to get into that situation. I want you to be thought of, frank, frankly, as the most creative and empathetic uh, developer. So the next time you buy a piece of property, it's developed to the, you know, to the standards that we all have in the back of our mind, but may not be nearly as articulate as Richard. Um, you know, I sit and listen to him, and I, I know that what he has in mind. And I think this, this board is trying to get you to be creative once again, uh, come back with something that, that shows that you listen. Uh, and maybe they are minor details, but I think there's a lot of people in this room that would like to see something that, that meets the standard which says that two houses for this given size should not look sufficiently similar to one another, that they look like they were built at the same time, but it's designed by the same architect and built by the same builder. Uh, well, I appreciate the comments, Mr. Gander, um, and we've always had a good understanding of your position. Um, in the interest of time, would it be possible to consider voting on them with subject to the second home, the British West Indies home, uh, having conditions relative to uh, revisions that are satisfactory, as opposed to as opposed to not you know voting now. I mean, I, I don't believe so. Excuse me. I don't believe so. I, I think you can proceed with one to the vote and withdraw the other, or you can proceed with both. Well then, well, well, then why don't we do this? Why don't we, why don't we vote, and I'm just making a suggestion for the record, why don't we vote to approve, if, if it is an approval, why don't we vote on the Bermudian, the classic Bermudian poem, and then I will withdraw and resubmit with modifications and taking into consideration the input of the community and taking into consideration the input of Mr. Stanley's comments, Mrs. Rothwine's comments, Mrs. White's comments, and Mr. Ganger's comments, and, and come back next month with uh, a revised. Can we come in? Can we come back in next month? Can you can defer. If you, if you wish, based upon the comments you've received today and the guidance that you've received today, they can make a motion to defer in regard to one of the houses before them if you decide to vote on one with direction to you to take into account the comments that were made today and bring it back for their con subsequent consideration. If I agree to a deferral, then that means I can come into the next month's meeting as, as opposed to re-advertising. I don't want to go through the whole process again. That's yes, correct. I mean, the, the ARPB agree? has already approved this design. Bill, you tell me, but I don't think they have to come back to ARPB again with this. This is now in the hands of the commission based upon direction from the commission. So it seems to me if you redesign, if this is deferred to a date certain, which could be the next commission meeting, that you could redesign and come back and see if it will be passed at that time. That's well, good. If it's a deferral, if you withdrew, you're right. No. If you have to go back there. Okay. Right. So no, no, no. I, I'd, I'd rather do it as a deferral. Yes. I won't go back. And I don't think that I have to go back. To, I mean, personally, I don't think there's a reason to go back to AIPB. They supported what we've submitted, and they were recommending body. This is the voting body that makes the final determination as to the approval. So. You know, I'm at your mercy, so I would rather at this point in time, based on the your guidance uh, and advice, that I would want to have a vote, respectfully have a vote on the Bermudian home and defer the, uh, the Key West, uh, or the, 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 the British West Indies home and come back next month with a redesign incorporating the comments that we've, that we've had, if that's appropriate, sir. Of course. All right, so we'll defer uh, where the applicant is requested today. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Which home White? are we speaking about? Uh, North or they want South? To they want to defer South. on the South Colonial West Indies property, which is, is uh, 3410, which is the South South one. That's the deferral one. That's correct. Yeah, that's all the question. Right. That's the one across from you. The one near you, Mr. White. Uh, are you 
absolutely opposed to deferring both of these until next meeting? Yes. Yes. Question to the landscape, our landscape architect. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Any possible redesign of the entry, the entrance, um, for the non-deferred property? For 3424? The north one? Yeah. You mean the driveway? That's right. If you had all of your opportunities. <coughs> I mean, with, without cutting down trees. Well, um, I'm saying if, if I had all of your opportunities. I'm, I'm sure we could redesign the driveway. What are you getting at? Well, <laughs> the the, the, the landscape architect uh, and I discussed the entry features prior to the application. Uh -huh. In that process, in that discussion, it was observed that there was at least one Australian pine tree that was in his design scope. And I told him, I didn't tell him that it was not possible, I told him that I did not have the authority uh, to remove a tree, so therefore he, in some respects, has modified the in inference to these properties. And with the removal of a particular Australian pine tree, it, it may create opportunities to indeed change the, the entrances of, of uh, both of these homes on A1A. Uh, we do have in both conditions, uh, both applications, the installation of additional pine trees, but nowhere does it talk about removal of any Australian pine trees, which has in my history and tenure, a very sensitive issue, one in which I do not make that decision. And so I am a bit concerned that my discussions <clears throat> with the landscape architect has inhibited his ability to perhaps express the entrance to these two properties in some form or fashion. Mr. Mayor, if, if you're of a mind to approve the structure as presented, and you're going to defer the other house, which should happen by way of a motion. You could, in light of the comments that have been made, also defer the entryway to the house that you're approving so that when you consider the other home, you've got the ability to deal with both entryways. Yeah, I think that, that would be good because what we'll do is we can address the entryways together as part of the motion <coughs> deferral. We're talking about a month. Right. Why don't we defer both? What's on the There seem well, to be what issues. issues. What, what, what is the. I don't have a problem with approving one with both the deference of the house and the driveways. Yeah, I, I think, think that's, that's, that's fair. I, I, think, I think that, can we change quite honestly, with all due respect to Mr. Moore, I think that I'm trying to be as helpful and cooperative as I can. I think that requesting approval. Uh, on the Bermudian home at this point in time so I can move forward with my permitting. Because it's a very long process of that. Response, your call. Further comment. I'm not sure, I cannot remember, and I apologize, what was discussed at the ARPB level. I believe that at least one resident, I'm not sure, questioned the time. Uh, would it be would it be done at the same time, so, so if that is the case, plan. pardon me? Talking about the construction, traffic yes. management. That's, yes. not, that's not going to affect it because if we defer one building for a month, by the time I'm, by the time I'm under, under construction, there'll be, uh, there'll be catch up. In other words, if I start one house four weeks sooner, then I'll be caught up very quickly because these are stem wall construction and not filings, and uh, I can move very quickly on it. I would still prefer to move forward on the Bermudian home so I could get that one in at least. And then we can address the driveways in the second home as part of the deferral process, if possible. Point of fact is that is the uh, alleged uh, 
Australia pine that's in the way, is it a healthy tree? I'm sorry? Is it a healthy, mature tree? Uh, I can't answer that question. Yeah, yeah. We've had this conversation before with trees that were yeah. magically disappeared, and, and, and they were, the issue was whether or not they were healthy or right. diseased or anything else. I, 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 I think it's all right to defer that one piece, but I don't think we should be discussing at this point in time the Australian pines. Until the Australian pines, you know, I'm really at the mercy of the, that's a very sensitive issue with the Australian pines as far as driveway location. I mean, This seems very disjointed to me. There seem to be a number of ancillary issues that are not resolved. Um, I'm not comfortable with it, but you've elected to, to move forward, and uh, I think we should bring it to a vote, unless you have something else you'd like to say. What, yes, what is disjointed? Um, I think we have a number of issues, the Australian pine issue, the landscaping issue, the issue of, of the two homes together, the drawing one, proceeding with the other, um, now we raise the, have the issue of the fig tree, which apparently was a big issue with the ARP bid. We have a number of issues that have not yet been discussed and resolved. The fig tree or the ARP bid? Uh, what are you referring to now? Uh, I think it's a straggler fig. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a straggler. Uh, that's on the south lot. Yeah, that's on the south lot. That's we're, dead uh, dead. Look, you see me if I will, Mr. Morgan. What we're, what we're looking for is to, is to, is to bring some consistency back to this and we'd like to proceed with the north lot the architecture and the site the way it is and vote on it and take a full defer deferral on the south lot and come back and see you next month that's the way we'd like to proceed landscaping as well landscaping as well as the as the house on the north lot the way it is and then okay. come back on the south good. lot all right so you're defining exactly what it is you want yes. to proceed with yes thank you all right very good <laughs> Anything else? All right. Is there a yes? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you have to come up and be. I swear to tell the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth, but I'll be gone. And 
when I when we bought it, our house, we love the house. But I mentioned to my husband, looks to me the house is too big for property. We already mentioned about so that is my point. You know, oh, and one thing I want to say about the two new two house on uh, under AONA again are possible of 4001. I thought it's a, th those houses are like a, this, it looks same to me. So like a, if something is a little different, but as when you see like a, you don't see like a, uh, with a uh, magnified glass when you see the house, you just pass by. Oh, those houses look same. So anybody see their house? <coughs> Same feeling feel as I do. I did have. You know, can I suggest we're going to defer to 3410 until next month and you get with the architect and try to work out this difference because sometimes the neighbors can work out different things and have a full <coughs> understanding of where the second floor is being positioned and windows you think may be overlooking and things can change, but I would suggest before <coughs> they come back, you meet with yeah. them. I think that would be very good, so there's a full understanding of your concerns. That's why I'm here talking about, um, I think that, it's, uh, there's a uh, my tense of change. Because <laughs> 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 I think that there's a little. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very so much. much. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion? <laughs> uh, Might I suggest that you consider the deferral on the one house? It may end up you defer both, but in regard to where there seems to be agreement between you and the applicant, that you first consider the deferral of that house, then deal with the other house. Okay. Which, by the way, you have the right to defer whether or not the applicant agrees to a deferral. It's just nice to know whether they would agree to a deferral. Okay. Well, then, I think the motion should be. Who would like to address uh, <coughs> the deferral? Uh, yeah. We're talking about the motion to defer uh, the application for 3410 North Ocean Boulevard, which would be the house to the south of the plot of project subject to the replot. Uh, so I just make a motion to defer. Uh, the application for 3410 North Ocean Boulevard, Gulfstream, Florida, uh, to a date certain, which would be next meeting. Uh, the next meeting of the town commission. Which, uh, which I have to say right May here. May 8th. May 8th, 2015, at 9 a.m. <coughs> Second. Commissioner Jane. Yes. Commissioner Stanley. Yes. Commissioner White. Yes. Commissioner Orth. Yes. Mayor Morgan. Yes. Which is where you are. Which where yeah. we are. Yeah. 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 We're now 3424. But okay, do we need a demolition permit before we go through all this and a land clearing permit? Well, first we need to decide are we going to defer 3424 since we have the authority to do that. Um, I, I, I think we should. You, I we disagree. Don't. So and I do think we, we should defer about. the um, driveway, but I think that the Georgian or the custom, the Bermuda House, it's going to be built. Um, I think he's going to make changes to the other house, and I think we should go ahead and approve the bond with um, the driveway and landscape. Defer all the driveway and landscape. Okay, Don, Don, your thoughts? What? what? Um, just so, Donnie, can I just ask you a quick question about construction timing, which probably is not germane to the application, but. Um, so with the demolition permit and land clearing and all this good stuff, so in the deferrals, uh, got to approve the demolition permit, which is going to, the house is over both lots. Mm -hmm. um, you're really just seeking to go ahead to, through the town of Gulfstream, by the building department of the city of Delray to proceed with the permit, building permit for the 3424. Uh, and what would 
be, what's your time, overall timing? It's 15 months from the date of this bar application? My, my timing is as soon as possible. This is, the yeah. length, this is a lengthy process. Right. I, mean, I have to go through the AIPB, the commission, now coming back to the commission. Then I have to go through Del Rey, which is a, these days a horror story because uh, everyone's left the whole the, the organization of what they're doing. There's no in City Hall. It's hard to get permits. So I'm just trying to move this along as quickly as I can. That was one of my points I was getting to earlier really about at least getting one of these roles. And answer your question, it's a good point in terms of the demolition permit. In order for me to stop one house, I'll have to tear down the I have to tear down the, the house that's there because it kind of straddles both lots. But I have an agreement with the woman that I purchased the property from where she can stay in the house until June first. So I won't be doing demolition until June first. So I won't, I'm not going to, I'm going to, it will allow me, in answer to your question, it will allow me, and I'd like to move forward on the, on the potential approval of the north lot as it is. Uh, with the landscaping. With the with landscaping. The driveway too. Yes, with the, the landscaping and the driveway. That will allow me to move forward with my permitting process, but I'm not going to physically start construction on that property. It will take me probably three months to get to that point. So that what's going to happen in reality is when we come back here on the deferral of the other property, then I'll be tearing down the house when I'm ready to go and vote with it. If it makes any sense to you, I'm not going to be doing the demolition. Right. Time. I mean, my point is, is just that you know, when is the demolition going to occur? Which you you answered, and then you know, some, first. something's going to happen here. So the the, first, res yeah, the residents are you know. Want to know? Okay, when are you starting? When's it going to be done? Okay, once, June, once it happens, and it's like, what about the traffic? One of the hammers going to be Between, stop between June, June, June 1st yeah. and July 1st, the demolition will take place and construction will commence. Both of these houses will be built simultaneously, and construction will be completed on these two houses within probably 10 to 11 months. Go back to a second motion. All right. Um, <coughs> I just want to know if uh, the three of you supported deferral of this property in Toto, or if you prefer to move forward with it, deferring only the uh, landscaping and uh, driveway. Okay, so we don't want to defer the landscaping. Uh, I guess I don't know why we want to defer the driveway and the landscaping. I mean, we, we're avoiding the Australian pines, and uh, we, we center the driveway based upon the existing trees out there. I as, think far the as, reason, the, as far as the rest of the landscaping, I'm not sure. The reason they gave for wanting to defer that is because you're coming back in regard to the second house to try to make it dissimilar to this, and it might allow you some them some flexibility if they defer the landscaping on the house that they sounds like they made. I don't know if they're willing to approve today or not, but that's the reason, so that there's some flexibility when looking at the similarity of the entrances to the two houses. But does that still allow me to move forward with my building permit application in Del Rey? Um, I'm not sure if Mr. Thrasher would answer that or Mr. Randolph. Well, well you're not going to get your demolition permit until after June. So can you, yeah. get, can you get your permit from Del Rey before you no, get No, in other words, I want to stop processing my building permit application. But we've got two, two issues here. Yeah, one, is the, one is the approval of the site plan, which is this and the facade. And then the other issue is getting the construction drawings approved uh, at Del Rey. I just want to need this too to do that. Mm -hmm. We're a little bit different. I know reading does the ins and outs a little bit better procedurally. So it's still. Well, she can ask a question though. That's a problem. Thank you. You don't notice everything. No, no, not really. I really think that, of course, I don't know how soon they'll be starting one when, once you take it in there. But I think that they're going to want the whole thing. So that's my point. That's why. That's why I say if we're going to vote, if, if, we're gonna, if there's a vote, but I don't even know where I, we can't even get. I think I'm, I'm helping everyone answer their own question procedurally. You can't demolish the house and come in with the package you need unless it's all done. You know. Uh, so it's like okay, we we got we approved seventy percent of the house stands the driveway on the thirty four twenty four. Well, you've got to, everything's going to go in at the same time. I don't think you can file early. They may start looking at it, but you're not going to get tag comments or anything or, or stuff on the on the permit without everything they need. For one lot. 
Yeah. Because we can't even, I, I can't, I don't, we can't even do it. You can't, I mean, your demolition permit's going to be, the house traverses both lots. Right so, so, so what, so what, what, so what I mean, is, are you suggesting that? I say we could do, if, even if, I'm saying potentially, even if we approve the house, I don't think that you can, I mean, you file, certainly heck, file a heck of a lot more building permits than anybody here ever has probably, but, um, I don't think you know, they're going to like take the package because we have like a piece here for 3424. You defer the other one, and then you've got this demolition. The um, I mean, I may be wrong, but is it possible since we can possibly explore some uh, creativity of approaching the south lot that's already deferred to vote on the north lot with the site plan as it is and then just defer the demolition request of the house for one month. And then that is sufficient for Delray to start reviewing that north lot as a building permit. Well, I don't know, if, well now I don't know if we're in a position to, we weren't approving 100% of 3424. So I mean, it's, you know, I understand your point, the timing, and you're gonna start them both the same. I'm just not seeing this work. Especially, and I, you know, I know better than anybody the limited staffing as building decisions be at all. What you're getting, if in the event three of these folks decide to go ahead and approve the structure today, is the comfort that they have done that, that you don't have, don't have to readdress that issue. Delray may not issue the permit that's within fine. this that's within fine. this thirty I'll, day I'll, period. That's fine. I'll deal with Delray separately. I'd like to move forward with the approval, uh, respectfully, of the north property. And uh, you know, let the you know let the chips fall where they are with Delray. At least I'll have that out of the way, and I can focus on the redesigned issues of the south property under the deferral of that, and come back next month on that specific property. That's the way I'd like to proceed. I was asked that question earlier if I would consider approval by Mr. Morgan of one home, and that's what I'm requesting. Uh, I think it's in everybody's interest to defer this, but if the consensus is to proceed uh, according to the applicant's <coughs> request, um, that's fine too. Mr. Morgan, you suggested you asked me the question earlier. I did. For the record, if I would be willing to, to, I did. to accept I have one. to confess, I didn't realize that we could defer without your consent. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. I apologize. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> So if you're, uh, the three of you, if your thoughts are defer the whole thing, fine. If you proceed with the building itself, deferring only the landscaping and, uh, and driveway, that's fine too. Please just make your, your uh, intentions now. And we, again, just for one more time for the record, we do not believe we need to defer the landscaping on the north lot. We can try to be creative with the entry and ways to change the entry on the south lot as part of the redesign of that house, so it's nice and clean. Instead of keeping one site plan and changing another one, yeah. we approve one That's north lot. You want to proceed with the north property, <laughs> landscaping, and driveway. That's correct. That's correct. And okay. then defer the entire south lot, and we'll come back next month, and we'll knock your socks off with something different. They've already deferred the other, so it's yeah, just this lot. Right? Yes. Yeah, I think under those circumstances, we should definitely defer the lot. But uh, we need to get a consensus here. Under be. those circumstances, you think that they should defer this north application? I do, based on the conversations and the comments that have been made today. So, but we have two people that have spoken. Uh, we could put it up to a vote, or we could just get a consensus here before proceeding. Mr. Mayor, we can take another comment from the public. No. I, I don't think so at this point, Mr. Graziano. Thank you. I've said my piece. <laughs> This is getting too confusing, so yes. I think it's, you know, there's other people involved with this process, which would be the town of Paul Stream staff, um, uh, you know, and we've got some other things going on with the residents, so unfortunately, I mean, we've raised a lot of great issues, so certainly some of them may have been new, uh, as opposed to the RPB, but I, you know, it's a lot of hit thins, and it's, it's important, and, uh, you know, I think we've got to defer both because it just keeps changing. You can't just, yeah. if we have the power to defer both to the time certain, we've deferred one, defer the second one to the time certain next month, get it all done. 
That's fun. Just a yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's the one thing that's the best in the outdoor. Make your motion. Talk about. So I make a motion to defer the application for 3424 North Ocean Boulevard, Gulfstream, Florida. The time certain, which would be the next town commission meeting, uh, May 8th, 2015. Second. Second. Really? <coughs> Mr. Ganger? Yes. Mr. Stanley? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Orthwine? Mayor Moore? Yes. We're going to take a five minute recess. <laughs> Some way he can at least give yeah. me some comfort. And at least then you can say, well, he wouldn't talk to me. And uh, if he said he wouldn't do it, then you can say, it's reasonable to ask for land. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is my wife, Jay Simmons. This is Brian Duffy. Nice to meet you. You both did a good job. Thank you. Everything else. Thank you. So the most trees are going to be, and if you go to Lake Wave, that's well, it's a spell so it's Yes, one on one yard, two of them are not So in this is the sunshine. Yes, the sunshine. So here's going to be just
better. Uh, is Mr. Brandon here or? Uh, he's not here. He's not. Okay. Well, we have this report. Uh, any comments relative? <coughs> Well, I, I only comment is it was my understanding, and, and I haven't seen them, but that doesn't mean anything, that the uh, uh, Comcast people are starting to, they're part of the project. Very pleased to see that. Yeah. You know what? They, you could see them out working. Yeah, well, I, 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 did, I haven't done it in front of my house, but that's uh, uh, good news. Right. Very good. Town manager, draft budget. I actually have uh, two items I'd like to uh, report on. Uh, there was a, a three-day non-jury trial that uh, took place August 19 uh, of this year. In the case, uh, the town of Gulfstream et al. versus Palm Beach County and Sharon R. Bach as clerk and controller for the Palm Beach County as intervener. Uh, case number is listed. A, um, on, on uh, March 16th, recently, the trial court entered a final judgment in favor of Palm Beach County on all counts. And uh, subsequent to that final judgment, the city of Delray Beach uh, withdrew as party plaintiff. So this matter uh, is most likely the, what I hear is going to be decided in the appellate level and will be appealed. May I make a comment on that, Mr. Mayor? Uh, the uh, Delray's uh, decision uh, was um, uh, very particular to Delray <clears throat> and not suggesting that they don't think there's a merit in what we're trying to accomplish, what, the, what, the, uh, uh, what we're trying to accomplish. And because our name, it's Gulfstream V, uh, that uh, I actually attended the discussion, uh, which was lengthy, uh, rigorous, uh, and Delray just had some particular circumstances that just they decided that they would withdraw. Uh, and uh, but uh, we'll still follow closely and uh, basically sit, hope that the outcome is as we all hope which is uh, that the court will find, the appellate court will find that the county uh, um, misused their power uh, in, for double taxation and or whatever else the issues may turn out to be. Um, that doesn't mean that the, the OG, OIG will go away, but it does mean that the funding of the OIG function will have to be done properly. A draft budget 2015. I've uh, invested some time to put together uh, general numbers for you at this time. It's still premature, uh, but the, the biggest content change has to do with the millage rate. Current millage rate in this fiscal year is 3.9. I'm suggesting in this budget that it be increased six tenths of a mil uh, to uh, 4.50. And the uh, taxable value and the rollback millage uh, is still yet to be calculated too early. We have no preliminary numbers. In the budget, there are um, there is provided eight hundred thousand dollars in this draft budget. There is provided eight hundred thousand dollars in legal, and that's based on the escalating prices and costs and invoices. Um, and it, uh, the mayor uh, had warned us that this would be expensive. And I guess you didn't have to be too prophetic about that. The actual thing is that it is expensive. We are making some progress, uh, in my opinion. Uh, the other thing is there's some unique uh, considerations for uh, some employees in regards to salary increases. So I believe that they, uh, they are warranted. Uh, they're, they're not a CPI or anything like that, but it is more of a uh, consideration of, of, of the work that they're doing. Uh, they, uh, neither one of them have signed on for this type of activity. But they are doing an excellent job and are fighters all the way, which is something I appreciate. Uh, the, uh, the, the budget does provide, at this point in time, uh, a uh, reserves of $160,000. And still with that, uh, there is a surplus of $34,000. These numbers will all change 
uh, as, as uh, information becomes more current. And with that, and it's been distributed, I would try to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, just regarding some of the legal successes, I would uh, direct anyone who's interested to go to our website uh, where we post uh, recent rulings by the courts on some of these decisions. Um, I've got a quick comment, which <coughs> I usually make every year or every other year. And we usually, when, we, when we're entering budget season, which would be the summer before we have to do the final approval and all of that, it's at the millage. Um, we talked about in years past having a budget workshop. I think uh, the opinion was of, of one former mayor and current commissioner, and current mayor in years past was we had usually had a couple lengthy discussions on the record at a meeting. Um, my only concern, I think uh, Mr. Commissioner Ganger mentions this every year, every other year too, is I just want to make sure if we're heading into the summer with a millage rate increase for certain, to address certain things in the budget that we have enough feedback, whether it's, you know, potentially on the record at a workshop or something, which may be at the same time as a meeting um, from the residents before a lot of them go away, um, you know, and all of that, or before they lose, you know, sometimes you lose interest with vacations on the summer. And we're talking about still, uh, with the current policy and things the town is dealing, we're still talking about uh, a significant increase, I think, over what, what, what happened last year, even though this is very, very preliminary. So I don't know if there needs to be any discussion, basically, on the timing of the meeting and whether the, you know, every resident's entitled to an opinion, whether it's on the record or directly to staff, because this is available to them. Um, if then we wanted to address that or just kind of keep going with what we did in years past as a commission as far as the budget procedure and the meetings and when we, when we handle it. So you're talking about having either a special meeting or uh, or making a point for discussion at the next meeting. Right. For a public comment. Yeah, I mean, we just, instead of coming back, and this is a really long meeting today, uh, a lot of times we just kind of uh, have it in in the regular meeting or as an agenda item for discussion, which accomplishes by and large the same purpose. We're not you know, having a lot of meetings on roads and things like throughout the year that are special meetings and different contracts. I think it's a good point. At least my opinion, uh, at the next meeting it should be discussed. It's now been mentioned, presented to the public at this meeting that uh, Millage Way is being considered for raise uh, feedback from from the public would be helpful it yeah, will be I, an agenda item yes yeah I, I i would go a step beyond that i think it's appropriate the next meeting to have it as an agenda item with discussion i agree but with i that. also think that there's a there's kind of a, a need uh for us given that we have been channeling resources to one particular issue that we ought to step back and say what are some other key issues that we face in the upcoming years, mm -hmm. and how are we going to begin to prioritize them, and most importantly, then how are we going to be able to fund them? And that's a discussion that I absolutely believe the public should participate in. Uh, there are lots of things that we could do. We know that town hall needs to be expanded, uh, at when and at what cost. Uh, we think, we've said for years, that, that at some point in time, our barn back there Shed. is going to fall down. And, and we really have to address that, but we ought to have to address it in the context of where does that fit into a, you know, more parking or whatever else we feel is a need that we have as a community. Um, uh, I absolutely feel we must provide, at some point, you've got it in your budget, funding for an analysis of fire and EMS capability on the Barrier Island, which we would be participating in some form of study. But that would require other communities to that, participate and, and, and too. And the and other know, have they we're having up? that same conversation, and yes, the other communities are finally yeah. getting religion and realizing, and it's all, it really depends largely on Ocean Ridge because they already have a facility, a facility. That, that could be converted for that purpose. But that's a long run. You've got to do a lot of study. You've got to have a dialogue with other communities, uh, such as Boynton Beach and, 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 and Del Rey. And you need to start somewhere. And we haven't, you know, we've been talking about this now for four years, I guess, uh, and, and we haven't done anything. Um, Can uh, I say and, I, yeah, go ahead. And then, you know, there's, there's a, a bunch of other things that, that may or may not be on people's radar, but we don't know unless they participate in these, in these kinds of discussions. I've had people say, 
you know, why doesn't the town have a cell tower? I've had people say, when is the town going to sell the Audubon? Uh, I mean, all kind or the uh, uh, bird sanctuary. There are all kinds of things that could happen, but they don't happen in a, in a you know, when you're putting a budget together. They happen because you talked about it, you have a feeling for it, and you give uh, Mr. Thrasher some guidance in terms of how he constructs his budget and what, what he puts as, 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 as bus haves versus wish lists. Uh, and, and I think that should be done in, in the sunshine. That should be done in front of, you know, with uh, people in the town who, uh, who have ideas. Before they leave for the summer. And be, uh, I think Tom's absolutely right. It's before they leave for the summer because the budget will be whatever the budget is, but uh, by fall, uh, you know, people will say, well, why didn't you put in something in the budget for, and um, we, we won't have an answer for them if we haven't had a discussion. I okay. agree. I think we should have long-range planning because we can't let everything else in the town go down yeah. the path because yeah. we're fighting legal. We have to maintain roads and do every, keep putting things yeah. off. Yeah. So I think if we put things in the budget, have a long-range plan, we, we should be consistent doing it, not being reactionary. Right. Like we're going to throw our money here. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess that, to, that, that, that maybe one of the agenda items for the May meeting would be you may even want to pick a tentative date for a workshop. And I think the workshop should be devoted just to that subject. I think to try and do it, you never know. Next meeting, we're going to be going back through those two houses again, and, and that could take a bit of time. Who, who knows what else would happen during those meetings. So I think we should set, set, set aside uh, adequate time to have a a workshop in here with the public invited, in fact, encouraged to come uh, rather than just, you know, it's advertised, come if you like. I think we should have issues that we're going to need long term, and Bill Fasher probably has ideas of what we're going to have to do in years to come, a 10 year plan or whatever. So you're proposing a special meeting in, in May? Given yeah, I would say probably the exodus. Or yeah, the I would say that uh, within the time between the May 8th meeting and the June meeting, and and presumably there we'll still get an mm -hmm. adequate number of. of uh, I mean, some people might even come all the way back from where they are to participate. Is that important? Agree. Should we select a date for a special meeting? <coughs> yeah, uh, we can. saying after our next meeting, so that would be uh, the week of the 11th or the 18th. The last week is not probably the best because Memorial Day falls mm -hmm. in that, as does the ARPB meeting. Would we consider having it in the evening so that people who uh, might not otherwise be able to come to a morning meeting could, could participate? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you get anybody in the evening. <laughs> well, I, I, I asked the question not just rhetorically, because I know that people in Paso Soleil oh, okay. have, have consistently asked that we at least have a, an occasional meeting in the evening so that they can participate. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Donna, you, you feel one way or the other about that, but it's, it seems to me that, that we want the objective ought to be to get a broad cross-section of the community and listen to what they have to say. Uh, so that we're not just taking Bill's list or anyone else's list and saying that's those are the most important things to us. We don't know necessarily what's the most important thing to some people, and we ought to. I think we ought to listen. I think an evening meeting would be good. Uh, I've also received a number of requests for evening meetings mm -hmm. from people, so um, I can go either way. But You said, Rita, the week of the 11th, uh, or the day after Mother's Day? Uh, yes, any time that week. Okay. That would be the 11th through the 15th. As you can see, my calendar is pretty sparse. So, it's All right, so it's essentially the second full week of May, mm -hmm. some day. Uh, the, sec the third, or oh, you said full. Second full week, so mm -hmm. it's the... 11th through the yeah. 15th. Um, comments and, and let's let's nail down the morning meeting versus evening meeting. Your thoughts? 
evening is fine with me. I think that's probably a good idea. It's important. It's kind of messing up. It's probably just a two We probably shouldn't be at 4 o'clock. Maybe it's going to be probably a little bit later on the start. What are the typical evening meetings? 5.30? 6? 5? 7, I think. Well, well, actually, Del Delray starts at six, six, six generally. Uh, Ocean Seven. Ridge B starts at sometimes five, sometimes six. Is, is that correct, Ocean Ridge re resident? Six. Six. Six? Okay. Six o'clock. Yeah. So if there's staff. Yeah. No, but that don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say that. <laughs> she said yes. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. actually, that's the other position on staff there. Sure. I'm going to get plenty of naps. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry about that. Well, okay. uh, what do you like? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What's a good day for people? Monday's not the best. No, I, 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 I vote Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday's and the best. and I, I, I think starting at 5.30 is not uh, outrageous because people who work can probably make it to a 5.30 meeting. And that given that dinner is behind it, you, you know, if you're organized, then we open it up and yeah. have the discussion. You know, you uh, Wednesday, May 13th at uh, 5.30. All right. That'll be workshop or special meeting? I think it should be a workshop. We're not voting on anything. We're not we're not, not, yeah. And, I, and I, it should be open to public comment right from the get-go. Right. So workshop. And we will have had it at the 8th. We will have had our first <coughs> kind of discussion within ourselves. And then this is a chance to open it up to people who either aren't here or uh, that's a new way. Right. And will this be, uh, of course, we'll have an agenda. What do you want on it? Strictly uh, budget or what do you want to call yeah, it? Yeah, I, I would say by that next meeting, we will give given Bill some feedback on the budget that he, the first thing he's had. Will we have anything new from the county uh, that they no. don't not buy that? Okay. So it's basically an assumption. And how did we get it? Why did we think? Property values will be X. What's the assumption behind it? And so forth and so on. So we all ground it in the same same general facts. And then, you know, here's what here's what is being proposed, and here's some alternatives, some other things that we would like to be able to do, and this is roughly what they might cost. Um, and uh, and I, as you know, I'm really believe in reserves. Uh, I want to make the darn sure that people understand that we're trying to build our reserves back. And I stand on my statement that hurricane reserves are an easy way to describe the catastrophe that needs to be addressed, and you have to have the money in the bank to do it. Okay, so we'll touch on it at the next meeting, and then we'll have a uh, workshop. Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. yes, yes, I would think from a marketing of the meeting, I don't think we're going to be able to be here, but for the marketing of the meeting, you ought to say long-range planning as yeah. opposed to a dull budget. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> good, good I agree with that. That's good what budget. I needed to hear. Budget <laughs> long-range planning. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anything else on the budget? Well, budgets are never boring. I try to be respectful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next architectural review board meeting is April 23rd. Uh, we've been provided with uh, ARPP's code review. I mean, this will take some time to discuss. Uh, what is, what are we supposed to do with the uh, code review from the March 26th uh, ARPP referral? Well, usually the way they handle this is we start right in at the top and take them one at a time. It's not expected that we get to all of them. Uh, we've given you the the section number that's being questioned with the page number so you can readily find it and what the comments and recommendations of the ARPB are and the date that they made those. Uh, so. Well, my thinking is this meeting has gone on long enough and uh, attention spans are starting to wane. Uh, I would uh, recommend that we defer action on this until the next meeting. Fine. Let's just put it on as an agenda item next time. There's one item in here relating to color, uh, to paint colors. Only
only one color on the principal building, as opposed to the mm -hmm. uh, two colors. The mm -hmm. two tone home, which is one of the points I brought about the size mm -hmm. of stucco, yeah. mm -hmm. two tone mm -hmm. um, color trim. Adding to an existing paragraph, all of, well, not a trend, but uh, existing colors, all exterior walls of the principal building and, and the associated accessory structures shall be of uniform color across the entire principal building or accessory structure. It's all 107, 106. Right. 106, B3. Mm -hmm. We'll have that. Let's have, have a look at that. Yeah, okay. Check the code right, prior to next meeting yeah. so that we're prepared no, for it. I, ch I, I checked the code before. I, I, I think that might have been the intent of the code, but it didn't really explain it as, as definitively as, as this one does. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we, we don't need a motion to defer that, do we, Skip? Uh, no, you can do that by consensus. We all agree? Yes. 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 All right, financial report on water usage. Just ask that you. Uh, Allow me to answer any questions you might have, but uh, it is submitted. No any questions? If not, we'll accept those as submitted. Police report. Actually, report. Accept that as submitted, please. I agree. If no questions, we'll accept that as submitted. Okay, we now move to um, two proposals uh, from Shenandoah Construction and Lanzo Binding Services. This is a uh, the request to expend funds on a, a repair, uh, actually more than a repair job, but it is a slip lining process. Uh, the outfall and, I'm sorry, the, uh, the outfall pipe that runs from Polo to the intercoastal is in disrepair. It's leaking and uh, consequently it creates larger opportunity for flooding our streets. Uh, we have used both of these suppliers uh, in similar work activities. They both do a, a very good job, in my opinion. And the lower uh, bid is from Shenandoah. It's for $23,490, and I would uh, recommend approval. It's identical work. Uh, that, that quotation is not nearly as detailed as, uh, well, Shenandoah's is more detailed than, mm -hmm. than Lanzo's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay, that helps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm recommending Shenandoah. Mm -hmm. uh, what, is they, what have they done in the past for us, Bill, just quickly? Uh, they've done all of our uh, video inspections of outfall cameras and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, they have. Uh, helped us install uh, these tie flex uh, duct bill <coughs> check valves that are located throughout the town. Uh, they have uh, also been involved with a repair, similar type of repair, but it was a blow up concept uh, at the core area at, uh, at uh, Banyan and Polo. The section just prior to this uh, beginning point of this particular job. Uh, the section that we're doing now at that time is not in disrepair, did not need to be repaired. So they've done uh, basically a lot of work for us uh, of this type. And they were the first, um, in my tenure, they were the first uh, supplier or vendor that actually gave us a video history of our pipe. So we asked them to come out so we could create a plan and the plan is, is current except now we're dealing with this uh, this particular section of the outfall pipe leading to the, uh, the code there. Okay. Well, town manager, you have confidence in Shenandoah construction. They are the low bidder. Is there a, a motion? I, I'd like actually to recommend uh, Expenditures not to exceed twenty-five thousand. Just give me a little uh, flexibility in case something happens. Okay. This also aligns itself with uh, statute two eighty-seven point zero one seven. Did we bid more than two? Or are these are the only two that these only two that, that I, I didn't. It was not a public bid. Okay. Two eighty-seven. Um, 
0.07, category two. Uh -huh. That's where I'm focusing. Okay. Uh, and did that, did that supplier that we hooked in with a couple of years ago, did they look, look at this? Or, I mean, is this uh, something that they do? Uh, uh, the Picking uh, back contracts. Yeah, picking back contracts. Yeah, with, referring uh, to for public works. Yeah. Is that so? Uh, no, uh, no, no, they don't do this. Okay. Okay. They're going to actually uh, melt, mold, uh, uh, melt, glue together uh -huh. pipes uh, of 20 foot sections, creating a section that's probably 160, 180 foot long. Mm -hmm. Put caps at both ends, put air in, and float it down the intercoastal mm -hmm. and jam it back up through the system. Okay. Is there? Are, are and they don't do that. That, that. Is there going to be another one of these next year, or I mean, is this well, the general state of our of this of these duck bills and everything? Or, or well, the general concept is to monitor whenever you see a uh, a difficulty. You know, mm -hmm. We know we have history that uh, that there was extraordinary uh, flooding mm -hmm. in that area mm -hmm. by residents complaining. It wasn't all connected to mm -hmm. this pipe condition, and this repair will not do away and make it perfectly dry in that mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we monitor mm -hmm. our outfall pipes uh, in a general, mm -hmm. we have videotapes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think we have discarded several videotapes that, with the director's retention rules. Okay, the town manager, if I can summarize, yes. requesting $25,000 authorization to address the <coughs> Gulf Stream's 30-inch slip line. Is there a motion? Move approval. <coughs> and to award to Shenandoah. Yeah. Yeah. Award to Shenandoah, and then it's, uh, yes, the manager has discretion to go up to 25000 for any changes. Second. Mr. Ganger? Yes. Mr. Stanley? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mrs. Hart White? Yes. Chairman? Gordon? Yes. Everybody got a new title. Mm -hmm. Right. We move to the ARPB uh, and appointments. It appears that uh, Amanda Jones has completed her third term, no longer eligible for reappointment, so we need to um, elevate or appoint someone to her position. Uh, we also need to um, address Mr. Murphy, Mr. Smith, uh, and Mr. Doherty, who are eligible for reappointment. Any comments? Well, I'll certainly move to uh, Retain the three that uh, whose whose uh, terms are, uh, are up. When are they up? Three up. Uh, now. Now. Okay. So uh, that's the first piece of business. Move to approve that they stay on for another three. And and, uh, and are they willing to do so? Do we know that for a fact? Well, we'll find out. We'll find out. I suppose. Right, so, uh, is there a motion to uh, uh, reappoint Mr. Smith, Mr. Mercy, and Mr. Docherty? So three so moved. Second. Uh, Commissioner Gager? Yes. Commissioner Stanley? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Orthwine? Yes. Mayor Morgan? Yes. Uh, we need to replace Mrs. Jones, who will be leaving. Uh, we have two alternates, Mr. Kent, who is senior, <coughs> and Mr. Roach. It would seem reasonable to elevate Mr. Kent since he's next in line. Any comments? Is there a motion in the so board? Second. Did you make that motion? I made a motion that uh, okay. uh, elevated. can't be elevated to permanent. And uh, do we need, by the way, uh, sorry for interrupting my own motion, but do we need to uh, appoint another uh, mm -hmm. alternate? Okay, so we need to find another alternate, mm -hmm. which is part of my motion. Has there been any applicants? We, we have a couple, I believe, from before when mm -hmm. we were short. We have a couple of applications mm -hmm. in the file. Consider that uh, have them uh, distributed for the next meeting. Right. right. Good. Should we advertise that we need an alternate, or are we just going to pick from who's already there? That's up to you all. We typically, we just put the word out. I guess we put it on the website. We put it on the website. On the website. Yeah, but I, I think it should be reflected in the minutes. Yeah. That we oh, it will. Uh, we will that we will uh, ask anyone who, who would be interested. Uh, once again, if they have shown it as before, or um, new people that, that may not have even lived in town. Exactly. I agree with that. 
So I'll put it on the website. All right, there's a, there is a motion and it's been second to uh, elevate Mr. Kent to permanent position. Rita? Uh, Commissioner Gay? Yes. Commissioner Stanley? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Orthwine? Yes. Mayor Lord? Yes. We move on to resolution number 15 01. Ms. Taylor? The resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Gulfstream, Florida, providing for the appropriations of budget expenditures in the general fund for the fiscal year ending September 30th. 2015 and providing an effective date, be it resolved by the Town Commission Town of Gulfstream, Florida, that the following reappropriations be made. <clears throat> an increase in legal services administration, 300,000, and a decrease in capital outlay for streets, 300,000. It's being presented for adoption the 10th day of April, 2015. <clears throat> Question? Move approval of the resolution number 15-01. Second. Commissioner yeah. Ganger? Yes. Commissioner Stanley? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Orthwine? Yes. Mayor Morgan? Yes. Move on to the next item, which is ordinance number 15-2. This will be read by title. This is for first reading. An ordinance of the Town Commission, Town of Gulfstream, Palm Beach County, Florida, amending the Town Code of Ordinances at Chapter 34 Utilities by creating a new Article 6 titled uh, Undergrounding of Utilities, providing that all facilities for providing electrical power, telecommunications, video, cable television, internet, broadband, and similar devices, collective, I read that, shall be placed underground, providing for the undergrounding of existing utilities, providing for private property owners responsibilities relating to underground service, providing requirement for a permit for placing utilities within the rights of way within the town, providing for time limitations on connection, providing for exceptions, providing for penalties, providing for severability, providing for repeal of ordinances that are in conflict, providing for codification and providing an effect. Effective date is being presented on first reading this 10th day of April, 2015. Any comments? Is there any conflict between equipment that would be used for wireless service, which is a utility in a way, it's certainly communications, but it will be almost definitely a program? This I mean, is what we're told that's needed. I, I understand that, but I, 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 I just wonder if somebody says, wait a minute, uh, sometime in the future we say, gee, if we just put this thing on our lawn, we can get better uh, communications, but it has to be up in the air. I mean, it, it's, it, I'm, you, you've got an exception for <laughs> pad mounted transformers, junction boxes, et cetera. Well, maybe you should put it in an exception for for wireless communication services, which are above ground. Why? I don't know. I'm just saying that some, some the, the cell towers and, and obstructive uh, communications for direct TV and so on and so forth are, you know, we have to review all that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same as if you're trying to put a 200 foot cell tower in a rural area. It goes to the boards, you know, you've got to apply the code. So you don't want an exception for that. No. Mm -hmm. This okay. is just to make sure everybody I has a responsibility. I understand why, to what, what, you know, why, why, we're, why we're doing it. I'm just, I'm just thinking about the... Uh, no, I think Tom's right. You're going to have an opportunity to review okay. cell tower. Right. Other comments? Mr. O'Hare? Oh, sorry. Ex exception 3, with that radio antenna associated equipment and supporting structures with such antenna used by a utility company for furnishing wireless communication services. Would that cover what, what you said? You see, permit. Permit. That's option. That exception. Okay. All right. Thanks for catching that. Should have read it more carefully. Mr. Chairman, thanks for the opportunity to speak. This ordinance um, says that all facilities providing for video, cable, television, internet, broadband, etc., need to be buried. Does that criminalize my direct TV dish? Take it up with council. 
No, this doesn't have anything to do with the di 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 dishes on the side of home. This is I'm sorry. This doesn't have anything to do with a dish on the side of a home. This deals with undergrounding of uh, facilities. And mostly, we're talking about the wires that come into your home to provide your facility. Well, I understand, sir. It's title. I'm not here to argue, sir. I'm just here trying to answer your no, question. You asked the question. I'm not arguing, sir. I apologize if it appeared I was arguing. I was just looking for clarification. I thought I gave that to you. Yeah, the, it, it says, <coughs> the, I know the title is undergrounding of utilities, but it says all facilities for providing telecommunication, video, cable, etc., cetera, uh, broadband, should be placed underground. And, and like Mr. Ganger rightly points out, we don't know what the future holds for technology, but I know that I receive a lot of utility, broadband utility, et cetera, through satellite dish. I just didn't know if this was in conflict with the Telecommunications Act or whether I should worry about my dish on my, on my roof. That's all, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? If not, we, uh, is there a motion to- uh, Motion to approve motion. ordinance number 15, two. On first read. On first read. Correct. Right. Is there a second? Second. Read it. Commissioner Gager? Yes. Commissioner Stanley? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Orthline? Yes. Mayor Morgan? Yes. It is by Mayor uh, and Commissioners, all aboard Florida discussion. Mr. Ganger? Yes. I will make the discussion as brief as possible, which is in response to concerns by people within the community. Uh, we've done a fair amount of research, listened to a lot of people, uh, tried to address their concerns as best we can, recognizing to some extent that our hands are tied because all of our Florida is private investment and private enterprise on tracks that are owned by private parties. Um, and that the crossings uh, are easements on private property. They're not the city's crossings. So the cities, to some extent, have their hands tied uh, in terms of what they can do or not do <coughs> to uh, oppose or, or, in fact, support all of Florida. Uh, the, uh, a great deal of effort went in from various regional met metropolitan planning organizations, NPOs they're called, up and down all the counties from Miami up in now into the north of West Palm Beach. And in the Dade and Broward and Palm Beach counties, the MPOs have generally supported all aboard Florida. But they've also made it very clear that there needs to be, before anything happens, certain improvements uh, for safety and, and, and quality of life. The most important wish to many of us is the, is the sound, uh, sound pollution, if that's the case, of these, uh, of these uh, uh, trains, whistles going all night long and all day long for that matter. Uh, without getting into all the economics and all the things that are going on, uh, <clears throat> there has been considerable success uh, in getting uh, the FEC Railroad, who owns the tracks, uh, to financially support and then other forms of support from other uh, agencies, public and private, for tra track improvements. Uh, and the track improvements uh, are principally, from our point of view, around the crossings. And there are an awful lot of crossings, and almost all of them have a, a flaw. They're dangerous. Uh, and people are killed uh, trying to get around the uh, around the stanchions. So the first order of business is to improve the stanchions, and and, and going from a, a two two system to four, so it's very difficult to get around. Um, that's that's a plus. Second, and uh, if anything, we all believe that the train whistles are getting or horns are getting louder. And that's really because General Electric has supplied some two dozen new, uh, new, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? Big locomotives. Engineering. Locomotives, yeah, I couldn't think of the word. It's been a long time. Uh, and um, uh, they are noisier, but it's not, a, it, it, they are still within allowable decibels. So, yes, they are noisier, but they, they could be even noisier and still be under the decibel count. So 
people who live near the railroad tracks, like people who live near airlines, airplanes, uh, are going to have to endure noise until such time as there is, it, it, there is technology afoot and it's going to be applied uh, uh, to calm the sound. And um, we support that. We think that's the right thing for, for us to do. In terms of uh, supporting or opposing all aboard Florida per se, well, whether or not we should have 32 trains going back and forth through our downtowns, I suspect that that will be adjudicated more by the economics than anything else. And that on April 20th, not very far from now, a, a newly designated board, that's actually an old board that hasn't sat for a long time, will be reviewing the $1.75 billion financing package, uh, which are special purpose bonds.